when uh, Lincoln signed that Emancipation Proclamation, there was a lot of debate that happened at that point. Some of the previous slave owners saw that maybe this could still be a labor force. Maybe they'll still work for us. However, there was a grouping of slave owners who said, get rid of them, send them back to Africa. After slavery, there was a real significant shift in terms of building our own families. We saw that we were moving somewhere. We were, we were moving forward. But the largest grouping, I think, was those who said, let's just make it so that they cannot reproduce. As we talk about the role uh, of some of these historical organizations, uh, who were really put together for the purpose of the sterilization uh, and stopping reproduction of African-American peoples in this nation. The reality is that we have to put it in historical context. They set out to sterilize us. There's something that's called eugenics, and it involved people determining that we were feeble-minded people, and so they need to sterilize us so that we won't carry on these, these bad genes and infect the gene pool. And these people who were supporters of the eugenics movement were also the same ones who in that day and age were opposed to public education and were opposed to the creation of public hospitals. And um, that was a hard period in our lives because many of the women didn't know why they couldn't have children. And they couldn't have them because the state deemed them a risk because they put mental, mental health tags on them, a risk because they wanted to control the birth rate in our community. And people think this is far-fetched. The discrimination grew with the eugenics. So blacks were not deemed desirable. The reality is, without having that knowledge, some of our young people and some of our not so young people feel that those organizations are friends to our communities uh, and will we'll fight you uh, if you raise issues about, about the ways in which uh, they operate, uh, the ways in which uh, they are strategically located uh, in or near the African-American community. Back in the day, Teenage pregnancy was not celebrated. It was something that was shrouded in shame, and the family did whatever they could do to make sure that the person who was pregnant was taken out of the public eye. When a teen daughter got pregnant in the 1950s or so, oftentimes, all of a sudden, they would disappear from school. They would no longer be around. And we would f come to find out later that they had gone to visit a family back east or somewhere out of the state. And that they had been gone for about nine months and they came back. And because we were friends, they would say something like, they sent me away because I was pregnant and I couldn't have it. And they made me give up this baby. That was in the 1950s. If the family decided to keep the child once it was born, the child was often brought home and the mother raised the child as their own and the child grew up with the mother as though they were siblings. This is some of the things that happened and it happened over and over and over.